palette on the west side. A lot of good lefty righty action. We have great pitchers. I'm excited. Our sticks are huge. And I mean, the team camaraderie, I feel like it's going to be really good because we're already like starting to talk a little bit. Let's go East. East for the win. I think East definitely has the edges here. When I look at the lineup, I definitely see a lot of speed and a lot of power. And combined, it's just hard to beat. I go after everything. Um, I'm, you're going to see me diving. You're going to see me um, doing anything I can. I'm going to be talking. You're going to hear my mouth. Let's go West. Go TV. There is no game like it dedicated to this sport on the planet. In Southern California, there's nothing more beautiful than this time of year, and especially in this gorgeous bedroom community of Irvine, California, the Animatting Stadium, Bill Barber Park. This, the PGF High School All-American game. All of these athletes headed to play college softball. We celebrate their careers right now. Amanda Freed, what a career she had as an Olympian, as a national champion. My name is Darren Sutton. Thanks for being with all of us. And when you consider what this means, it truly is a tip of the cap to all of you outstanding softball players for what you have accomplished, Amanda. We celebrate them as they head off to play to get to the Women's College World Series. Well, this really is a celebration today. The best of the absolute best in high school softball as we send them off to do their thing at the next level, no matter where they go. I'll go into some fantastic Division I colleges that we'll have a chance to announce and celebrate today during this game. But I love this best competition, and I'm excited to get this game going. Who are they? Let's meet them. Let's kick it on over to Fred Salas, the voice inside this ballpark of PGF. Fred, introduce these athletes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Deanna Manning Stadium in beautiful Irvine, California. We're here for the 2023 Premier Girls Fast Pitch National Championships. Tonight, the PGF High School All-American Game between the East and the West. We begin with the East, the visiting team down the right field line. Introducing first, Number three, Abby Hay. <laughs> Number seven, Libby Walsh. <laughs> Number eleven, Mariah Penta. Number 12, McKee Eaton. Number 16, Julia Noller. Number 19, Bella Fall. Number 14, Cassidy McClellan. Keegan Rockwell. Number 18, Malena Tambora. Number 20, Katie Coots. Number 1, Sage Margetko. Number 15, Ashton Danley. And the East starting lineup. At center field, number 17, Lila Blackwell. At shortstop, number two, Emily Digby. At second base, number four, Mia Williams. At first base, number 10, Angeli Bueno. At catcher, number 21, Katie Stewart. At third base, number 6, Katie Flannery. In left field, number 8, Kylie Johnson. In right field, Number five, Savannah Bedell. Yeah. 
the hitter, number 22, Casey Wood. Extra hitter, number 13, Anika Rose. Assistant coaches for the East, Sierra Briggs and Reagan Krause. Head coach, Jordy Ball. And down the left field line, the West Ryan. Janissa Conway, number six. Number nine, Sierra Daniel. Number 12, Kennedy Miller. Number 13, Naylin Marshall. Number 20, Gabby Lynch. Number 8, Mikey Morris. Number 18, Caitlin Terry. Number 11, Marissa McCann. Number 7, Gianna Modest. And number 21, Mika Luffy. The West starting lineup. Right field, number 17, Sophia Knight. In center field, number 16, Cassidy Pickering. Extra hitter, number 22, Ryan Brown. At third base, number 10, Giselle Alvarez. At third base, number 3, Haley Olivas. At second, Number four, Isa Torres. At catcher, number one, Kylie Brockman. In left field, number 19, Alana Leach. Extra hitter, number 14, Lynn Lee. Assistant coaches for the West, Riley Holtorf. Dakota Kennedy and head coach Aubrey Monroe. Being selected for the PGF All-American team is such a big honor. I remember watching such amazing athletes before me play, and I'm just super excited to get this opportunity. Let's go, West! When I was younger, before I was on a team that actually went to PGF, I had always dreamed of playing in that tournament, let alone being an All-American. I never thought that that would be possible. There are so many great athletes that partake in this event, and to be able to be recognized is very, very um, amazing. Yeah, East! Caitlin Terry walks into this circle with the packed house looking on. Premier Girls Fast Pitch High School All-American game. Let's take a look at the lineup she'll be dealing with. In those red jerseys for the East, and there are commitments up and down as we've talked about. Blackwell is in center field. She's a commit to go to Virginia Tech. Digby is heading to Georgia. Williams is heading to Florida. Bueno on behind her. She'll be on her way to Florida State. Number 21 in that jersey is Catherine Stewart. She's going to Texas. Flannery is the third baseman. She is headed to Oregon. It's Johnson, Bedell, Wood, and Rose. We'll introduce all of them to you. But we tell you that KT, Caitlin Terry's from Greenway High School, 
She's out of Glendale, Arizona, plays for the AZ Storm. She gets the call to open this thing up. This is a UCLA commit. This is quite an honor for this grad to get this start. UCLA, the perfect fit, just up the road from here. From Arizona, she said it's simple. The location, the coaches, I'm home at UCLA. And Caitlin's had a really nice PGF tournament. So it's good to see her out in the circle getting the start today. The daughter of Joe and Christy facing Lila Blackwell. And that one is slapped foul. We're excited to be with you. After what has been a busy week of softball, a celebration at the 16. At the 18 new age groups, 18 new premier and platinum championships yesterday. Our underclass futures All-American game just wrapped and it was a dandy. Lila Blackwell's out of Franklin, Indiana. Beverly Bandits, her team, finished in that number two spot at the 18 new premier championship. Very two-time Gatorade Arizona Player of the Year. Two-time 4A High School Player of the Year. When you win awards like that when you're a junior, you just send a message to the state. And she won back-to-back -back Gatorade Players of the Year, this talented pitcher. Her inspiration, Lisa Fernandez. And that left arm sends it high. Now you see Terry just attacking the zone. She's so explosive off the mound. Throws hard coming from that left side. A lot of good up spin, out spin. Takes a chop at that one and sends it foul. Yeah, what a wonderful run for the Beverly Bandits. Rock Thunder. A great program out of Florida Gold. Right out of the box. Great effort, didn't matter. Not quite sure what you can do. Haley Olivas did everything she thought, got it over to G. Alvarez, but that is fun. That is speed on display, Lila Blackwell. And this was just a battle in the box also. Just doing whatever she can to get the ball in the dirt, in play, and look at that speed down the line. Olivas in and out of the glove very quickly, but not enough to get that speed. Meet Emily Digby, who's out of Decula, Georgia. She plays for Georgia Impact, 18U Sampson. Brett Sampson, her longtime travel coach. This is a University of Georgia commit. One and one the count. Digby was saying, look, Georgia was my number one for a long time. I love the campus. I know the city of Athens. Coach Baldwin has put together a great staff there. I'm honored to be a part of their future, and I look forward to working with all of them. And for most of these athletes, there's a few more sleeps, as they like to say, at home, and then it's off to college life. It's a quick turnaround going from here, packing up and getting on the road. Throw down from her knees and nearly threw her out behind home plate. Kylie Brockman, that was a strong effort. But a stolen base, that speed for Blackwell. And a great jump from the knees, quick release, nice tag, but the hands get in. <laughs> Terry fires that one home defensively. Leach, Pickering, Cassidy Pickering, Sophia Knight in the outfield. We've seen Olivas, Sarah Perez, Issa Torres. G. Alvarez is at first, Brockman behind home plate. <laughs> Emily patiently works her way on, the daughter of Lori and David. Older sis, Elisa, she's proud of her, just graduated from Georgia. Now batting, second baseman, number four, Mia Williams. Mia Williams now. Oh, and won the count for this talented athlete. Dad with a long, successful career in the NBA. She's committed to go to Florida. We've been talking about her for a long, long time. Oh, 
came down off the end of the bat. I feel like that with several of these athletes, when we look back at the history of PGF and when it started, some of them playing at that 12U level, young 14s, but they've been here year after year, and now finally on this biggest stage, as we bid them farewell before they go to college. Her dad, Jason Williams, successful basketball career, mom a great runner, that's thrown into left field. Will that play to run? Hurrying home, and it will. Aggressive on the base pads, and the East strikes first with a miscue. And they lead it by a score of one to nothing. So ball in the dirt. Blackwell does a good job of seeing it down, and then a little bit of a miss thrown ball into left field. A little hesitation as soon as it's down. She's off, sees it into left, and takes off her home. So now Digby out there and a chance for Williams. We talked about that great family bloodlines handed down. Denica, her mom, was a two-time All-American track star at Florida. Dad, a great basketball player at Florida. Like chocolate, he was known when he played in the NBA for 13 years. Stays back really well on that changeup just to fight it out of the way. You have to react quickly to Terry's fast stuff, that rise ball, and then the off speed. You just do everything you can to sit back and get a piece of it. Mia, high fly ball to the wall. Gone! An All American tour around the bases, three to nothing, the E squad. She's coming for you, Gator. She'll be wearing your uniform soon. And she just smat, sat back and took that knee-high pitch. That had to have felt so good following that out front changeup. Just absolute laser. Stirring things up. It's been a busy day with talented athletes. Number 10. It's the first one we've seen sail over the boards. Something tells me in this game it's not the last. There's power in the circle, there's power in the box. Angeli Bueno down in the count, 0 and 1. 0 and 2 the count. Bueno from Oviedo, Florida. Tennessee Mojo, Michael Danley, her travel coach. She says goodbye to that group and goes to Florida State. Three-time PGF All-American High School Offensive MVP. This time, though, she is handled. That's a nice little bounce back and a pretty pitch. Yeah, strong first out of the inning. Now batting, catcher number 21, Katie Stewart. So Caitlin Terry getting back on track. Now she faces Katie Stewart. Katie, Illinois native. Plays for the Lady Dukes Lamar. We're getting good news about that program's founder and her head coach, James Lamar. Just a couple of days removed from receiving multiple transplants and hopefully as his strong wife tweeted out, also the head coach at Duke, Marissa Young, that his new birthday is July 27th, 2023. So James hopefully on the path to recovery with some small miracle surgeries. That's Katie's coach, that's her program. She's headed to Texas though. After all she learned playing for that program. She got an opportunity to go with the Lady Dukes Lamar team, take a trip to Puerto Rico, play some international games, bond more as a team. What a wonderful experience. Outside. Lance and Suzette, her parents. Sister Sam played softball at Valpo.
Hoping to study business. Katie Stewart. Outside. And this battery is working hard. Caitlin Terry throwing some nice pitches on the outside part of the plate, not getting that call, but Brockman doing everything she can to keep it over the black. Kelly Demianu is our home plate umpire on the bases. Chad Graffo, Hal Morgan, Chris Chubb are umpires in this one. These are NCAA Division I umpires that come to be a part of this event. This is a Fabulous collection of men and women. Hit hard on a hop out to short. Perez fielding and firing Sarah over to G. Alvarez, Giselle. Two outs in the inning, three to nothing the score. Now batting, first baseman, number six, Katie Flannery. Katie Flannery is headed to Oregon, but she's headed to Oregon from Alabama, from Hoover, Alabama, just graduated Spain Park High School. Played for the Bolts, the Birmingham Thunderbolts, Coach Rocky Thompson. That pitch resembled a bolt over the outside corner for strike one. Right back to the screen. He hit 451 last school year. This school year still doing big things. Over the shoulder, Isa Torres with a great running catch. The smile on her face, pitchers love a play like that. Young athlete, Isabella Torres committed to go to Florida State. And that is a Florida Gator. Gator going, going, gone, three to nothing. Homers are fun, especially in All-American games, and we saw Mia knock one over the boards. Sophia Knight, Cassidy Pickering, and Ryan Brown on down with Alvarez, Perez, Olivas, Torres, Brockman, Leach. Lynn Lee will introduce them all to you as they hit. One of the best in the land, Keegan Rothrock, is in the circle. The University of Florida commit. Zips that one just off the outside corner. She's from Whiteland, Indiana, on Cali High School. She, too. A Lady Dukes Lamar competitor. Felt at home the moment she stepped onto campus. Will study psychology when she attends the University of Florida. Sophia Knight is home. She's from Huntington Beach, California. A great travel program coached by Rob Weil. The Wildcats Weil. She's headed to Boise State. Defensively working behind Rothrock. It's a talented defense with Johnson, Blackwell, Bedell in the outfield, Flannery, Digby, Mia over at second with Bueno at first. Katie Stewart does the catcher. Now a lifted foul. Knight, a familiar name to you, not far from home at Huntington Beach. What can you tell us about her game? Uh, she's really evolved from the left side. I mean, I, she's a short gamer, a lot, a lot of speed, but has really developed that power game as well. So she's a threat to do either and everything in the box. Rolls that one. Foul ball. How about that decision making by Katie Flannery? I thought for sure that ball was going to hang and hit the bag. It's very smart to grab it before it can even maybe nick a corner. Right, going to play for Coach Justin Schultz. Boise State's going to be one of those programs that bubbles up in a positive direction for several years. Yeah, they've already done really great things, and you keep getting athletes like Sophia Knight to join your program, and it just attracts greatness. 
They're bringing a Romero to campus too, aren't they? The last of the great Romero sisters. I think Sophia Romero is oh. heading up there. See, they're getting it done. Three and two the count. Knight rolls that one, cutting across. That is electric speed. This is the kind of player, especially playing in the Mountain West, just look out. You can't draw that up any better. Cut off perfectly. That's the only play you have is to come across and make a quick throw, but Knight is just so quick on the path. Rothrock spins that softball as she now faces Cassidy Pickering. If you're into the prospects and the future of the sport of softball, these are two very famous names if you follow the sport that are dueling with one another. Both a, a big part of travel softball and what they've been able to do as athletes. Cassidy headed to Oklahoma, the outfielder. Oh, and this is outside. Dealing with Keegan Rothrock, the daughter of Greg and Laura. Mom played college softball at Indiana Purdue, Fort Wayne. Three and one the count. Rothrock three times, a Max Preps All-American. Indiana missed softball this year. Three and two the count, but a lot of who she is goes to that Lady Duke Jamar program. It really gives a ton of credit to her experience playing travel softball and events like this. We've been talking about Keegan for years at this event. Rothrock issues the walk. She shares with us her experience playing travel softball, how it helped her growth as a player. Hi, my name is Keegan Rothrock and I am signed to the University of Florida. Um, I am a third time PGF All-American and this year I'm on the East team. Travel ball has definitely played a huge role in my life. I definitely grew up on a softball field. Um, even from when I was a little kid, I grew up on a playpen on the third base side of the slope pitch softball fields. So I definitely grew up playing softball. Um, I actually played for the Indiana Gators when I was younger. And so that's what led me to want to play for the University of Florida because they have a Gator mascot. So to my little self, I was like, oh, okay, Gators. <laughs> and so I played for them and I played for the Beverly Bandits and the Tennessee Mojo. And I'm on the Lady Dukes and I play for Coach Lamar. And it has been one of the best, experience of, best experiences of my life. And I've definitely met some of the best She's dealing with Brian Brown now. Brown, who's headed to Texas, splits that infield all the way to the wall. Two-run score. Brown with a pair of RBIs, a talented athlete out of Thompson Station, Tennessee. And a great reaction with her dugout. Well, look at how hard this ball is hit. That's on the ground, and it gets all the way through to the fence. Plates two runs and gets herself a double. Giselle Alvarez playing across the diamond at first from Cerritos, California. From Los Al, they call it locally, Los Alamitos High School. A Washington commit to go play for Coach Tarr and wear that purple. Plays for Wildcats Weil as that one. You see Coach Rob Weil in the ballpark the last couple of days. She was a Futures All-American last year. Sunset League champion in Los Al in 20 and in 23. The daughter of Grace and Freddie. Turned that one over and put something on it. And Alvarez is one of those athletes that really can now change the projection of a game Number with two. the swing of a bat. And she's Sarah done that numerous times Perez. throughout the year. Mature athlete, I think Washington's got a real good one. Cal State Fullerton awaits the arrival of Sarah Perez. She's from Whittier, California, so not going far from home. Perez plays for the U.S. Athletics Gold Team. Coaching staff is why she chose Fullerton, she said. 
at Fullerton in the conference champions and postseason. Coach Ford, Coach Jorge, giving her such a warm welcome to the program. She's been to clinics at Fullerton since she was nine years old. Cynthia and Thomas, her parents. Her older sister, Sienna. Pitch to Cal Lutheran out here in Southern California. Out toward short, charging, second out of the inning. Pretty quickly, Emily Digby, the shortstop. Big aggressive turn, out at third base. Bueno fed Flannery, and that'll end things. Ryan Brown came up with a big hit, just a little bit aggressive on that turn. But we're not shy of runs to start this thing. Pitchers, beware. Five runs in the first of this, the high school All-American game. Turn signal broken. <laughs> Having fun at the yard, got a souvenir, have a PGF softball. Amanda Free, Darren Sutton in beautiful Irvine. We welcome you back. This is a packed venue. And that's when you start this game. You hope that's what you build. Communities, fans of the sport, young people, parents. Kylie Johnson to lead things off out of Wesley Chapel, Florida. The Clemson commit shoots it right back to the screen. She played for Teo Kamal on that Georgia Impact Premier team. Graduated from Wiregrass Ranch High School. I've always watched these PGF All-American games the past three years. She shared being able to play in the game meant so much. Kind of like I feel like I'm living out a dream. And you're also about to go play for Clemson. And if you're buying stock the last couple of years, I'd buy Clemson softball stock sure. from the birth, the rebirth, if you will, of what Coach Rittman was able to, to do very quickly. Yeah, they climbed very quickly within the first couple of years. I mean, straight to the top. It was fun, crazy. Great fan support, great facilities. Up and away, got a chase that time. Back out in the circle working is Caitlin Terry. Now batting, right fielder, number five. And a quick first out, a loud first out. A little rise ball in the outside corner. Savannah Bedell lifts that one off to the left side. Savannah, savvy from Columbus, Georgia, Northside High School graduate. LSU awaits her arrival. Wrapped up her time for Coach Patrick Lewis and the Georgia Bombers. Older sister played softball at Hampton. We followed that name through these games at PGF. Older sister, Kennedy. Changed up on her. That was a fun one. That was a good one. She lives so much up in the zone, hard, belt high and above, and then just pulls the trigger and reverses the spin on this changeup. KT elevates after the changeup, gets a swing and a miss. And over the top of that one, that'll do it. Let's hear about who she is as a pitcher. Introduce those wicked things we're watching on the field. I'm Caitlin Terry. I'm going to UCLA. I'm a 2023 PGF All-American on the West team. I have all pitches, fastball, changeup, drop, curve, screw, rise. My best pitches are my curveball and my rise ball, and I think my most effective pitch is my rise ball. My curveball on lefty hitters is, of course, effective too. My first batter, my approach is going outside, starting with my curveball, and then busting them inside with the rise ball, maybe going to a changeup after. Terry, that's who she is with her word. She showed you with her stuff. Really pulled it back together after the Williams home run. Love it. She sat down five in a row. She's fighting with Casey Wood now from Bentonville, Arkansas. Plays for Coach Jeff Wallace of the BC Peppers. Great, strong Midwestern program. She's committed to go to Arkansas. Played in the Futures game last year. Trish and Jeff, her parents. 
spoils that one, so we'll do it again. Two-time Arkansas State champion as a high schooler. She's hit for the cycle during her time as a high school player. Very hard to do. You ever do that? No, I don't think so. I guess I would remember if I did. Skipped in there, nice job. Brockman working behind the plate. When you ask Casey where she has grown the most, a lot of athletes between 16 and 18 say the same thing from mine. Being able to fail, mental part of the game. Giving myself grace and support, she said, when things go bad. Chases that one up and struck out the side. We talk about piecing things back together, a strong statement. Terry, the pride of Arizona. UCLA awaits her arrival. LA's calling. Three to two as we move along to the bottom half of the second inning. What a beautiful shot. We were here as the sun came up. We'll be here as it goes down on this beautiful evening. Four games, a couple of All-American games, two championship games, that PGF softball in beautiful Irvine, California. Amanda Freed, Darren Sutton, and you, thanks for being with us. Haley Olivos to lead things off from Cypress Gar High School in Cerritos. Plays for the Explosion Premier 18U travel team, our good friend Brett Denio, who helps so much, a right-hand guide through these broadcasts. But Brett, her travel coach, and Haley is committed to go to Loyola Marymount, just up the road. Not far from the ocean up in the L.A. area. Beautiful campus, Loyola. Yeah, Troy Flowers, the head coach up there, a good friend of mine. Puts together a solid program every year. A little bit low, two and one the count. This athlete graduated with honors. Boyd and Sabrina, her parents. I give a lot of credit to dad for her growth in softball as she heads off to play college softball at LMU. Hopes to study sociology at Loyola as she takes inside. And Rothrock issues a walk out of the gates. Now batting, second baseman, number four, Issa Torres. Here's Issa Torres now. We saw Issa make a fine play at second base. Isabella plays for the Hot Shots Nelson team. Tied up with that one. Quick turn right out of the glove. Transfer firing the first Mia Williams after the walk. Olivas moves into second base in the scoring position. Went after the first pitch to Torres. Olivas really had to hustle to pass in front of Williams without getting hit or making contact. Kylie Brockman is from Kansas City. She plays for select fast pitch 18U. Headed to go play at Arkansas, Eric Jones. Her head coach. What a career she had at Piper High School. 18U National Championship last year, winning it with that select fast pitch team. She was a futures competitor as well. Joe and Melody, her father and mother, Lynn and Shane, her step parents. High fly right field. Bedell with one out, settles under it for the second out. Runner tags and heads to third easily. Two outs in the inning, though. Now batting, left fielder, number 19. Alana Leach from the Woodlands Leach. in Texas. Sudden impact her travel team, the Woodlands High School. Her head coach is right down below watching her play as she is headed to Knoxville, Tennessee. Aaron Weekly, what, about five rows below us down yeah, there. Been here all day. It's been really fun to see the coaches that have come out to support their athletes. 
and the weeklies have been one that have they've stayed the whole time. There's a familiar face. Coach I is in the house. <laughs> Along with Major League Baseball Network's Harold Reynolds. Lifted left field pretty well struck. That one hauled in and a nice play out there in left field by Kylie Johnson. And Leach is retired. We play on. A lot of stars in the house. Out of surprise, Arizona, Marissa McCann steps into the circle from Willow Canyon High School, a Midwesterner originally. She continued to play for a select fast pitch and is a commit to go to Mizzou after playing for Eric Jones. She won state championships in AZ in 21 and 22. Made that move out to Arizona and had more than 600 career strikeouts in high school. The daughter of Heath and Jennifer, Marissa takes the rock and goes to work. Annika Rose is her foe. Tried to square that one up. Had a chance to talk to Ani Rose and her mom, Amanda, when we were on the cruise and heard the story of uh, a friend, Colette, who played basketball with Ani in high school, passed away a couple of days into the school year. Her number was actually 13. So to her great surprise, Ani Rose opened her uniform to find that she had drawn 13. It was by random, but. Yeah, maybe some divine intervention. What a way to honor your friend once you put that jersey on. I think so. It's a nice play made out there by Perez. Now batting, center fielder. It has great contact, but yeah, a lot of range. I'm glad her mom shared that with you. What a, what a touching story. Isla Blackwell from McCann. One ball and one strike to count on Lila. A couple of state champions, a stolen base record for career, for game, for season in high school. Very dangerous should she get on and get going. We already saw that back in the first inning. Game changing speed. And we'll see that at Virginia Tech. Yeah, that speed and the aggressive instincts on the base paths. Blackwell intends to study animal science to become a large animal vet. Very involved in working with animals. Trying to balance softball, her social life schedule, her training, working with animals while playing competitive softball. So overcame by planning my whole week out one week at a time, making sure everything gets done on time, and then I have to find just a little bit of time to relax as well. <laughs> but animals are a big passion of hers. I love when these athletes find their passion so young. Daughter of Christina and Eric Blackwell. Also spent time making weighted blankets for support for young people that suffering, battling cancer in the hospital, pediatric cancer. So she gives a lot of her time to things that warm her heart, but then warm the heart of others as well. This event is always Touched the community and made this community a better place. Left it behind as that one is chopped foul. Eight pitch at bat thus far.
Boy, what a take on that changeup. McCann, on the other hand, professionally studying occupational therapy at Mizzou, more specifically in pediatrics. Wants to work with young people. This is a battle going on right now. I love the approach at the plate with Blackwell. Her hands are back. She's just trying to get a pitch that she likes. And she's got him heading towards the left side of the field. You see shortstop and third base both pinched in. They said she went around. That's a challenge with slapping. We all know that that motion takes you forward. A conversation about what she saw. This was a great at Number bat. Three, Emily Digby. I don't know, she's not arguing that it held back, but it was pretty close. An 11 pitch at bat. Two and oh, the count as that one sails high to Emily Digby. Emily walked and scored back in the first inning in front of Mia Williams' blast, her home run. Three to two, the score. Emily, the Georgia Gwinnett County Player of the Year back in 2021. She wrapped her high school career with 34 home runs, 155 hits. Three and one the count. As we told you earlier, headed to play at Georgia. Three one, she's on with the walk. That's twice. You know, you and I talked quite a bit when we were announcing these teams about how well represented several colleges are on these rosters from some of the mid-majors making a push to, you know, the obvious Oklahoma's, UCLA's. But it's nice to see these athletes choosing schools that are the best fit and, you know, like a night going to Boise State and Cal State Fullerton represented. <laughs> Mia Williams leaned on one and knocked it out of here. One and one the count. Ball. Boy, it's glad to settle in on ESPNU. We have settled in in Southern California, the PGF High School All-American Game. Olympic gold medalist Amanda Freed. My name is Darren Sutton. As we move into the top half of the third inning, this talented athlete with a bat in her hands right now with a blast with a home run on her way to the University of Florida, Mia Williams. Out front of her now is Emily Digby. And trying to sneak her way on because she was called out that time with a called strike. Couldn't tiptoe up the line. Not able to fool them that dramatically. We'll get you set. This has been a blast all day long from Air Girls Fast Pitch. It's the high school All-American game. Three to two is the score, our PGF high school All-American game. Neil Williams ends the inning with a strikeout. And this what is fun about this event, if you're just hopping on with us on the U, is the fact that these athletes are done. They have made their mark at high school. They are on their way within weeks, literally, to play college softball. These are some of the best players in the nation. 
Lynn Lee now for the West squad. Madeline out of Millipitas, California. Elena Tambora. From Marietta, Georgia, Mount Perrin Christian School. This is an Auburn commit. Atlanta Vipers Gold, where she played for Stacy Tambora. Loving the Auburn community. Coach Dean with an incredible coaching staff, pitching coach. It's it hard, boy, that's flagged at third. Right over the top of that arm, what a fine play. Katie Flannery, thank you very much. That ball's hit hard. It was hit hard. She didn't have an opportunity to get in front of it, but she did stay down the glove attached to the ground until it came up on the hop, picked it, and casually threw that ball across the diamond. Sophia Knight singled and scored. As Tambora misses just off the plate. Tambora grew five inches her sophomore year. Didn't throw very hard, relied on spin and movement, all of a sudden throwing very hard. And kind of lost the ability to use her words to be a pitcher. Nice play out there in left field or a good effort. Couldn't come up with it. Isla Johnson. Well, the light's starting to take effect. It's so beautiful right now. She learned how to combine as a pitcher both that speed and the spin and finally learned how to keep hitters off balance. That's an interesting, when you grow tall, you gain leverage, you're throwing hard and you actually don't know what to do with the velocity. <laughs> but then when you figure it out, it's actually a pretty nice combination. And another reason why I love that the recruiting has changed because you hear these stories all the time of athletes who don't grow until sophomore, junior year. And at that point with the old rules, the recruiting window may have passed them by. Swings right through that one with the slash and a beautiful approach. Sophia Knight, that's a couple of hits. Sophia's got great back control and doesn't even follow through with the swing, just creates the angle and puts the ball where the athletes aren't. Owen oh, won the count on Cassidy Pickering. I loved what Tambora had to say when asked about being the leader, the mythical governing body of all softball. Only for a day, what would you change? Tambora had a fabulous answer. She said, hmm, let me think about that. I think I'd make it illegal to start any game at 8 a.m. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, she's in luck because that's a rarity at the collegiate level. Yes, she's done now. That one well struck. Throw the wall in right center field. It will go up against that wall. Pickering hurrying on around. Knight can fly out front. It's a triple and an RBI. The West squad with another run. 3-3 three, three the score. Boy, Cassidy crushed that softball. Yeah, stayed back really well and made nice, solid contact. A couple of hops up against the fence, and with Sophia Knight's speed, you know she's scoring from first. Pickering, though, showing off her wheels, coming in hot behind to get a triple. <laughs> Owen won the count. Ryan Brown. Just missed up it in. 
Brown with a beautiful swing of the bat, plating a couple of runs. She's from Thompson Station, Tennessee, and headed to Texas. Renard and Anitra, her parents. She takes a strike. Dad played football at Ole Miss in the early 90s. Round 2023 scorebook live, best third baseman in the nation when you're taking a look at that who's who list. What an honor. In between, fouled it off. Round played varsity basketball, freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Plans to study psychology at the university level at, at Texas. Two and two the count. Just wrapped her journey at Independence High School and playing for the Top Gun 18U national team, Coach Bob Turner. Hit on the line, that's a couple of hits. Making a statement for that MVP award when it's all said and done. Three RBIs, a pair of hits for Ryan Brown. And that's tough to do when you're in an exhibition game to get hits off of these elite pitchers, but to do it while pitchers are changing every couple of innings, it's hard to get your timing down and to make adjustments. You have to do them within the at-bat. Giselle Alvarez goes right to work, fouling that first pitch off. The 0 1. Alvarez, if I made her the leader for a day of the mythical governing body of softball, said I would get rid of changeups permanently. <laughs> <laughs> they are very creative. <laughs> Spoken like a great hitter. Well, what a pretty swing that is. Lined in the right field for a base hit. Look at Brown hurry to third. Takes an aggressive turn that time. I mean, you want to talk about a, a beautiful swing, a loud swing. Big contact here from Alvarez. Yeah, she's got that. The quick hands through the zone, turns on this pitch, drives it into right field, and that allows Brown to easily get over to third. That, not a changeup, by the way. <laughs> Sarah Perez takes another shot at it, drops down a bunt, but drops it down foul. Perez grounded out to short back in the first inning. Darren and Amanda, glad to have you with us here in Irvine, California. There is no greater celebration of the sport than Premier Girls Fast Pitch and a true test from the 10U age group next weekend, 10, 12, and 14. This weekend, 16 and 18. This high school All-American game and a futures All-American game. 0-2 oh, the count on Perez. Perez, her high school's female athlete of the year at Lucerna High School. No balls and two strikes to count. Thought about it, but didn't. Well, every time Sarah steps into the box or laces up her spikes or puts a glove on, she does so to honor her grandmother, Connie who she lost. He said, I overcame that and the sadness from her passing, whether it's school or softball, simply put, I just do it for her. Little roller, this is gonna be tough for anybody to make a play. 
Connie would be proud of that speed. Flying Sarah up the line. And that's an RBI. Two out RBI. Make it a one out RBI. And another run added on. And once this got over Tambora's head, you knew it was going to be trouble. Just gets a piece of the glove on it. Well played on that hop and the attempt to throw her out. But we've seen a ton of speed on this West team. And that's Brown crossing the plate. There's a lot of speed in this game. I mean, we, we know about the power. We're seeing it. First baseman. Haley Olivas. Haley Olivas. Her second opportunity to hit Hay. Walked and was stranded back in the second inning. Five to three the score. And Tambora just continues to pound the strike zone. She's responding really well. She's had a couple of hard hits, but also just a couple of infield hits that have really gone the west direction because of the speed. Elena's mom played at Florida State, now owns Champions Fast Pitch Academy. Roller out towards short. Well, how about that nice adjustment with a little throw behind. They get the, the lead runner. Digby just stayed comfortable out there at shortstop. And Digby's given way to Annika Rose, who has stepped in and played it very smooth with a base runner coming by. Nice job by Annika. Getting Perez, the trail runner. Runners on first and third, two outs. Here's Issa Torres. Isabella, Georgetown High School. Three time All American. It's meant the world to her, she says. Issa saying, I know this is a competitive game filled with great athletes all over the country. I'm just excited to be a part of this opportunity. You can see that by the smile on her face, even with that big swing at the rise ball. She's loving this game and this opportunity to be out here. Sis Mariana plays at McNeese State, a senior this coming year. Her parents are Joe and Angelica. Torres playing second, just as comfortable playing short. So Mariana really inspires her, watching her go through the ups and downs of being a college softball player, but never giving up. On the ground, in between hop, beautiful play. Played very smoothly, boy, the defense has been at a premium. Savannah Bedell, that play to end things. The West offense flexing. Singles and triples. Timely hits, oh my. Having a great time, aren't we, Ryan Brown? Boy, a celebration of the sport, and we've talked about all these athletes heading off to college campuses, and a, a great lead in to Coach I, as we call her, Kelly Inouye Perez, head coach at UCLA, joining us. Thanks for spending a minute with us. Absolutely. It's always wonderful to be surrounded by just great athletes and a love for the Boys. sport. It's a great night. It's a beautiful night here in Irvine. And that's what I think is fun, and that's why I'm glad you stopped by, if only for a second, because all of these athletes in the classroom and on the field, this is one final send-off, and I think well done by this club travel age group to send them off to you guys in college because they deserve one last party. Yeah, I, I think you know that's the best part about collegiate athletics. You know, their ability to work hard on the field but also in the classroom to earn the opportunity to be able to get, you know, to that next phase of college. You know, this is a night of celebration. You know, all of these girls had to work hard to be able to be, you know, to get to this point where they can be on this stage but also had to focus in the classroom to get into college. It really is what, you know, UCLA, not UCLA for us, we focus on academics. Right. But 
But it's every college. It's the ability to be able to get that opportunity, yep, get a degree, play some softball, and hopefully do some great things beyond the white lines. Because it really is about all of it, right? Like you have to get it done on the field and in the classroom in order to go on to that next level. But how excited does it make you when athletes come and are able to play on a stage like this before you get them in college? I think that's the best part about it. It's where our sport is and how much we've grown. You know, I remember back in the day, you know, we weren't televised, even the championship at the World Series. And to see where we are now, to see the roadmap, to see games televised throughout the year, to get to the point where these high school athletes are on ESPN with opportunities like this. So more more than just their local communities can see, but they've earned this opportunity. The sport has grown. We've gotten into the living room so that so many more people can fall in love with the stories, you know, to see their work, to see what they've done to be able to get to this point. And I think that's what softball is all about. It's exciting. It's fun. We've got beautiful, talented, smart athletes that are representing such a wonderful, you know, an opportunity like this tonight. It's interesting too, Kelly. We're seeing this generation of softball player, their talent, their well-roundedness certainly but I also think, and Amanda and I talk about this a lot, choosing the right school for them for a variety of reasons. Not always feeling the pressure to go power five D1 no, because maybe that's not best for you. Pressure. Maybe there's a major at a university that David suits you better. Stewart. I feel like now more than ever, your athletes, the former athletes that used to do what she did for so very long, they're going where they, they think it's best almost all the time. Well, I think the bottom line is there is opportunity everywhere from you know literally from division one two three you know naia you know you can go the junior college route there is an opportunity to pursue that is is something to celebrate we are coast to coast we have different opportunities at every levels your ability to get a discount and continue to further your education and then get a chance to play softball there's there's so much to strive for and the whole experience is what allows you to grow as an individual it doesn't always have to be on the power five stage or at the world series yes that's fun but being able to go through the experiences, learn life lessons, get a degree and figure out how you're going to succeed beyond, that's what sports does. It creates those really tough moments <laughs> that you have to face in yeah. your city. You got to learn a little bit about yourself, go back to work, and then figure out what you're going to do next. That's what I love more than anything about athletics. What story does this tell? A crowd like that awesome. for a high school game. That's just a high school game. It's where we are in our sport. We're celebrating the best and the best. We've got the East versus the West, and we've got in an in a area right here in Orange County that we love our softball. So you got a you lot do. of people that are out here watching girls from all over the country that come here and have the opportunity to represent who's the best but tonight we just celebrate the fact that they've earned the opportunity and we have a crowd here to celebrate that it's almost august last question for you thanks for being with us what are the first things that freshmen go to when they arrive on what's next for you dealing with your freshmen oh. as they arrive on campus well, what's their schedule look like i think the, one of the first things that, that we've got to do is we got to get them um, we got to get them we're actually going to summer school first to be able to get them acclimated right. I think that's one of the great things that we're starting to see a lot of. They're, they go to college, they get into summer school, so that they have school and some training without the full grind that allows them to be able to settle in and, and start before practice starts and the whole real grind. You've got school, you've got weights, you've got training, you've got just the entire schedule Monday through Friday. So we got to ease them in. But the first thing I'd say is get them their meal card so they can eat. That's what I would say. <laughs> because I think fueling is important. Yes, absolutely. Coach I, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Thanks we for really, me. really appreciate I your appreciate time. I appreciate it. Take care. Kelly Inouye Perez, the head coach at UCLA, spending time with us this inning. And what a treat. She's not alone. There have been a lot of college coaches out here, and earlier today we saw a ton of them. And then later on, this is more celebrating the athletes that have come by. Oh, UCLA. Freed bringing in all her people. I know. I actually love what she said about, well, just how things have changed and how they're trying to acclimate the freshmen a little easier before getting on campus. And I talked a little bit to Caitlin Terry's dad about when she goes up there and she's going to take a, a little summer school course. I remember stepping on campus my freshman year and it was lined up from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you just jumped right in and you got it done. So um, I love that the athletes are going to have an opportunity to go in a little early and get their feet wet. By the way, Karen Weekly is going to stop by as well. You know, equal time. I, I agree. Elite coaches. As soon as going to be lying outside the door. <laughs> Coach Weekly. You should just take calls. They're really nice. I mean, Amanda and Darren are great, she says. Okay, I guess I'll do it. We'll do that in the next notes. half inning. What they ask. 
Runner moves up as that one skips into the dirt. Angeli Bueno is at second base now. McCann still working in the circle. Two two popped up. Very shallow center field. Somehow that communication worked out. Held my breath for just a moment, but a nice job coming in and working with one another that time. And all three have to communicate on this, and that's a great call by the shortstop. Nice job by Mikey Morris there. Cassidy McClellan gets the call to hit. And McClellan hits a high fly ball. Tough to pick up in center field. But it is found just in the nick of time and turned into an out. Denisa Conway on a beautiful night in Southern California. Coach I, thanks for stopping by. That was cool. Coach Manette is a national champ for two years in a row now. He had tears of joy earlier today. It was a joy to be around him. It's always a joy to be around great college coaches. We saw Coach I stop by. Karen Weekly, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. What a beautiful night for softball, huh? Well, it is, and here's what blows us away just here to report. You've been here all day because <laughs> we've been here all day, and you are the strongest one. And kudos to you. It is a great night for softball. I know earlier it was for recruiting reasons for you, but now just celebrating the sport, you and your husband here, huh? Yeah, really. You know, we've got a few players uh, coming sure. to Tennessee in this game. And, you know, just great softball all day long. But uh, some really exciting championship games starting at 830 this morning. So, yeah, it's been a long day. Ralph, Ralph's asked me once or twice, <laughs> when are we leaving? <laughs> <laughs> and really widely represented right across the country in these games. There were a number of colleges that are represented. What does that say about our sport and the growth of it right now? Oh, I mean, the parity, the growth, um, just how it's it's booming everywhere across the country. And that's what's so cool. You know, back when I started doing this, it was really a West Coast dominated thing. And now you see these champions coming from all over the country. You see these players coming from all four corners of the country and playing at a really, really high level. And they're the ones that are growing the college game. Coach Weekly, this is a high school game, and I'm just saying that with respect, but it looks like a Division I college crowd. What does that say to you about the health of the sport? Well, that's what's awesome. You know, this morning at 8.30, I could easily find a seat. Yes. <laughs> we got here about 10 minutes before this one. We took a little break to eat dinner, and it was packed, you know, and that's just so cool. I mean, there's people of all ages here. Obviously, some are here to watch their daughters, but teammates supporting each other, um, you know, just everybody out here. What a beautiful night and, and great softball on the field. What are the first things that happen because all these athletes are about to become freshmen. They're saying goodbye to travel ball and a lot of them to their homes pretty soon. What are the first things that happen when they join a coach like you on campus? Well, it's really about letting them get acclimated and letting them get comfortable, get to know their teammates, uh, make friends in other aspects of the campus and just get used to college life. You know, softball is going to be a big part of that. But we don't need to hit them too hard with that right away because the transition they're making is huge. I mean, this is one of the big life moves that they will make. And so, you know, we just want to get them settled and get them comfortable. I think a couple of years ago, and it's been interesting because Coach Vitello knows on Campus View, baseball followed the lead of softball in this case with these athletes really being able to grow until their junior year. Then that's when the recruiting begins. Now baseball's followed suit on that. How have you seen that benefit the sport? It's been instituted for about five years. I think it's huge. You know, when we were committing sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, that was crazy. And I think that might be something that has contributed to the transfer portal mm. uh, because yeah, people is. change a lot in those years. Number and 20. they change a lot even once they get to yeah, college. But, you know, if you're going to commit an eighth grader, heck, they don't know what they want to do. And, and things are completely different by the time they're a senior. So I'm really happy that, you know, we're not starting that process till September 1 of the junior year. When we passed that, um, Tony was one of the first people to call me and say, how would you get that done? Mm. And it's taken baseball a couple of years to get there, but I think they're really looking forward to it as well. Yeah, I'm on the baseball side, excited about it. Karen, thanks for stopping by. Tell Ralph we said hello. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Tennessee head coach Karen Weekly. She's been here all day, and I mean not just just part of the day, but for all of the softball, recruiting earlier in the day certainly, but 
an opportunity after watching players to celebrate the sport. Some players that are headed to go at Tennessee. Boy, who's next, Amanda? This is, I know. This is really just, fun. I should get a handheld and just walk the crowd. I am excited that Katie Coots is front and center and working in the circle. And we're allowed now to, to take a moment to introduce her because she is a special athlete. She's the one who really trains in the weight room, had, takes pride in that part of her life. As that one is bounced onto the hard pan and racing up the line, no chance to make a play that time. Really good turning it loose. And that's a pretty swing, too. Gabby Leach with a base hit. Yeah, speaking of Coach Weekly, one of her athletes, hopefully she was able to catch this beautiful slap, that high hop, and then showing off the speed down the line. Yeah, right back in her seat. Isabella Fall is also committed to go to Tennessee. Oh, and hacked upon and fouled off, off to the right side. Kylie Brockman. Fly to right field back in the second inning. The Arkansas commit Brockman. Owen won the count. Goots is from McLean, Virginia. Oklahoma State commit. Excited to be a part of this event. Her mom is Kathy, dad is Greg. Two-time Virginia Gatorade Player of the Year. High fly ball, center field. Really good range hauling that one, and there was some aggressive base running. But the runner gets back with plenty of time. This pitcher, talented, two-time Washington Post Player of the Year as well. And an OCB professional bikini bodybuilder truly trains as a bodybuilder in the weight room. Number 17, Sophia Knight. And if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> now you're not going to forget. 4.6 GPA. Her faith, a really important part of her journey. She's very open and shares about that. That one has rolled foul. She openly talks about during 2020 when a lot of us were struggling with a lot of things in life. Our globe was struggling that she struggled. She shared with all of us back in 2020 with an eating disorder. She was in a bad place physically, mentally, spiritually. She said, by God's grace, I was healed. I put my identity in my faith. And I grew as a human being, now putting a lot of time in that circle, in the weight room, and on her way to tell her story at Oklahoma State. Loud and proud, Katie Coots. Jenna Mardes is in the circle, Sage Marjeko about to hit, and the man behind all of this for a decade and a half is Dan Hay, the president and CEO. And it was 2010 that this great event was born. And Dan, this event wasn't around, certainly this high school All-American game. But as you've reflected through this weekend and you think back to 2010, how proud are you of how you've grown? We just had two great Division I coaches come and talk about this yep. event. How proud are you tonight? Uh, extremely proud. This uh, event, as you said, started uh, about five years ago. And uh, two years ago, we added the Futures program where we had the top sophomores versus the top juniors that played. Uh, in the country and they played earlier today so this is the culmination of these kids' career. They're now seniors and uh, they're off to college right after this game is over pretty much and uh, what a celebration for them to have. And with the new recruiting rules having this 16U age group this week and a lot of coaches I mean it was amazing this morning it was like a D1 coaching convention with the new recruiting rule, which benefits the athlete, that makes what you guys do even more important, providing good events. Absolutely, and it doesn't hurt that we have all the top teams in the country right. here. Uh, 325 teams. Ajeka with a, a base hit to the right side. Continue, sir. Yeah, 325 teams attended this week in uh, four different age groups in the 16 and 18 and under division. So, um, you know, it, I, I heard an estimate we had four to 500 college scouts with assistants and head coach coaches here this last week. 
Well, I believe it, and I saw them crawling around all the complexes this week, and um, and then here especially. But so going back to the celebration of these athletes, you spoiled them. You spoiled the kids. You spoiled the families. Everybody was invited because it really felt like a true send off and a celebration of the hard work, effort, not just by the athletes but by the parents. Yes, we put them on a beautiful three uh, three story yacht in Newport Harbor, and. Um, Ashton Danley came on and quickly rolls into a double play. What a fine play at short. Continue your thought. Yeah, so we, we had the, them on this three-decker boat. We took them to Newport Harbor and uh, just with their families. Uh, we allowed the families to come on and we served them lunch. And our staff was there to greet them. We gave them all of their gear that was donated by Rawlings and uh, New Balance and Easton and the glove and they just got a lot of gifts and just had a blast for four hours and as you can see there was a nitro ice cream person there and they just <laughs> let, that was the hit of the whole it really was. Whole, whole, whole cruise so Naylan Marshall with a fine play at short to turn that double play really proud of your umpires and how much they have shown out at this event what a, what a steadiness they provide as we've talked about these are the top college umpires coming to do this event yeah, especially for this first week. Uh, we are very fortunate to uh, have many umpires that want to work for us, but this week we bring in about 50 to 60 of the NCAA umpires that work college and uh, give these kids a taste of what these top umpires in, in are about. Plus, the other local umpires that we have that are coming from different states that don't work NCAA, they're all top of the line in the travel ball side. So. Uh, these coaches, uh, I've heard no complaints this week. They got a lot of compliments on, on the umpires. They're a, a great, great staff. Thanks for putting on an amazing event and allowing us to come work here every year. We really appreciate it. Okay, no problem. You guys do a great job every Dan year. Hey, the Thank president you. and CEO of PGF. The opening ceremonies were a wonderful celebration as well. It's about the experience. It's about the families. And it's so much fun to enjoy what they are able to accomplish. PGF, the All-American game. Some great guests the last couple of innings, but we love watching Sage Marchetko pitch. She already tossed a no-hitter in this event as she goes to work. She is a dealer in the circle for the Beverly Bandit. She was dominating 11 strikeouts. In the end, her team came up short in the championship game. But for four innings, I don't know that I have seen a performance like that, like Sage earlier today. No, she was just fantastic through the first half of that ball game earlier today. And even after that, was throwing such a nice ball game. Rock Gold just came up with a few clutch hits. But Margeco's had such a phenomenal career with the Beverly Bandits. And this week was just a, a really nice celebration of her career. Janessa Conway, the outfielder utility player who is committed to go play for the University of Michigan. An opportunity for Janessa, who's out of all of Hearst, California. Wrapped up her time with Sorcerer 18U. Gabala's team, the U of M commit, played at Marysville High School. Two and two the count. Two years ago, she played in the Futures game, was on the sophomore team, playing against the junior team, the daughter of Trisha and Jeff. Rated a top 20 athlete in the nation, according to Max Preps. That's what it is. It's so heavy. We saw that earlier today. That drop ball, it's like it's got an anvil attached to it. Yeah, and it's back. Look, look at how much break there is at the very Nine. last minute. I mean, that thing just Number dives two. down towards the dirt. Ryan Brown. Okay, Ryan Brown making a statement for that MVP. Three RBIs, got a couple of hits, a double and a single. All of a sudden, there's a screwball right at your kneecaps, 1-0 and the count. When Sage is right, you just don't get comfortable. South Carolina commit. Sage is out of Lamont, Illinois. And rise ball sails up and out of there. Sage has played in the championship 
on a couple of occasions. She is the Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year the last couple of years, won a state championship, throwing back-to-back -back no hitters in the state tournament. Look out, SEC, you have a good one coming your way. And so if there's contact with that pitch, that's the kind of contact we see. Yeah. I mean, even when you try to get under, you really have to try to get under the pitch to get any lift on it. But this is what we see most of the time is that miss hit high chop ball to now the left eight. side of the field. Number 18, Caitlin Terry. Caitlin Terry, we saw her pitch earlier. Now that left-handed bat, as she waves through that one. And this is one of the players that Coach Kelly Inouye Perez will be making sure gets on the proper meal plan, making sure gets going with her classes. What a fun opportunity. your family did years ago to send their athlete off to a real special place in UCLA. By the way, we had to do some backroom dealing to get those coaches on. <laughs> One wouldn't do it without the other, without the other, without the other. That's the best way I know to say it. And then they scouted. It's mainly Freed they're worried about, the, the type <laughs> of question. She's really a deep investigative journalist. True. The 2-1. That one is rolled foul. I love how she said Ralph's starting the campaign. Like, can we call it at some point? Are we good? But he's still here. He's a trooper. Yeah, Ralph made the move. With Ralph. It's getting late. <laughs> well, again, they've put in our day. That's no one else really has besides our production team. Dan, who's just never stops having energy and running this event. No fans have really come to all four events, but the weeklies have. I think if I play for Tennessee or if I'm a supporter of that program, I think that's pretty cool. I think it's very cool. And I think athletes and families love to see that. That's heavy spin on that pitch that dives down and away here in the bottom of the fifth inning, five to three of the score. Now batting number 13, Naylan Marshall, Marshall, Marshall made that fine play at short. Nayland's from Elk Grove, California, Franklin High School. Plays her travel ball, wrapped up her time with LTG as she lines that one down the left field line. But it's foul. Nayland on her way to play at Berkeley to play for Cal. This is that play we talked about, smooth. Yeah, reaches up the middle. After she covers a lot of ground to snag that ball, prevents it from going through to the outfield, and then takes the double herself. You said one key factor in choosing Cal, and she's on her way there. The coaching staff, their competitiveness on the softball field, another, or their academic programs, and the help they provide their student athletes. Much like the SoCal version of the UC school, both some of the best public schools in the world. Meaning UCLA, of course. Nabby Hay getting some work in behind the plate. You know, it's tough when you're popped back there, you're receiving a pitcher like Marjeko. You're one of the best catchers in the country, but you're still not familiar with the movement and the tendencies in your pitcher. We're reaching and grabbing at that left arm, kind of at the thumb. I'm hoping that's just the buzz that she's feeling, but there's a couple of things she's uncomfortable with right now. 
We'll watch Marshall try to get comfortable. Let's hope she's okay. Yeah, something. She felt something bite. going to take a couple of practice swings just to make sure, and I don't blame her, Anisha and Wesley, her parents, had played baseball at Grambling State for four years. And that's just ruthless. You know a hitter's uncomfortable in the shoulder, and you throw a screwball with teeth right in. Or you could say it's good pitching, one or the other. Yeah, it's both. <laughs> Three and two, the count. You got to be a little ruthless to be good. No interest. And she can make sure that shoulder's okay as she trots to first. And we certainly hope it is. How about it? Number seven. She's letting her know Gianna something on that left side, Dakota Kennedy, out there at first. Gianna Modis. Gianna from Tucson, Arizona, Sal Point Catholic, and she takes strike one. Plays for Explosion Premier, our good friend and one of our leaders here, Brett Denio, the travel coach. She is headed to BYU. She was on that one. Left Sal Point, the back-to-back -back state champion in Arizona. Leaves behind Greg and Valerie, her parents, as she heads off to college. Her mom did play college softball at Eastern New Mexico. Amadis, I've got a 10-year update if you'd like it. She'll be a dermatologist living in Texas. Not sure where in Texas yet, but we'll be on our way to owning her own practice. Also want to travel the world and experience different countries with my family. A Texan, a dermatologist, traveling the globe. With a family. Went around, it looked like there, runners move up. I like the 10-year updates. Well, the call is she did not go around. I think she did go around, but in the spirit of an exhibition game, she'll take another shot. Yeah, we want to see this. Uh, yeah, I mean. You mean what? I want to see her swing it, like swing it. Yeah. There you go, really that's what that. you want to see. So you went around both times, but the second time, second that's how you want to go good. around. Swing it like you're a dermatologist with some desire, traveling the world, leaving Texas behind. Welcome back on a beautiful Southern California night. Mika Lupi steps into the circle from Nicholas, California. She is an ASU commit, Arizona State. She goes to work and fires that one home. Facing Keegan Rothrock. Hamilton player in the circle now has a bat in her hands. She loads up that tippy toe with that lead foot and fouls it off at the plate. Mika's catcher, Kennedy Miller, working behind the plate. I think this is one of my favorite parts about this event is you see these pitchers hitting, and they don't always get that opportunity during the week in championship play because they maybe have a long road to go in, in the circle, but these pitchers can swing it. Well, especially, you're exactly right. They've been hitting all through high school, all through travel softball. You were saying. I mean, that's a laser beam for Rothrock. And her mates. It's quite stoic, by the way, Keegan. Now, buddy, yeah, she's like, what? I'm, I can hit? This is a nice swing. A lot of power right back through the middle. Libby Walsh takes her chance to swing it now from Plainville, Massachusetts. Just graduated Philip King Regional High School. 
Plays for Rhode Island Thunder, 18U. Dave Lottie, her coach. Back-to-back -back ASU commits as she trots to first. Couple of runners on now. Now batting, number 18, Malena. Yeah, Sun Devil meeting a Sun Devil. They're about to be teammates in Tempe. Elena Tambora, you were speaking of pitchers hitting. The Georgian and an Auburn commit. Making the move not too far from her home in the Atlanta area. Two and one the count on Tambora. Boy, pretty good take from Loopy on a screwball that dives down and in. And Miller's working hard behind the plate also, going up to get the rise and then trying to get that low pitch up in the zone. Base is full now. Mika loads him up. And a quick visit. Aubrey Monroe, Dakota Kennedy, Riley Holtorf in that dugout. Jordy Ball, Reagan Krause, Ciara Briggs in the first base dugout. these coaching staffs are so cool like I love that these are coaches that are in the game right now or just out and can really have conversations with the athletes about what it's going to be like no, when they step on campus in well. for some might be they a week see. two weeks it's right Easy. around the corner Macy Eaton with the bases loaded against Loopy with the infield drawn in. Gonna go ahead and look to take that run, and she does, she swipes it. With a head first slide, it didn't have to drift away all oh, till very far, and all of a sudden, Blackwell streaks to the plate and scores a huge run, it's 5-3. Check it, 5-4 now. I think she caught everybody off guard. The ball does not get that far away, but as soon as she sees it go, she's off. Five for the number. Lopi with that pitch misses up and away. Mika graduated with such honor from high school, salutatorian of her class with a 4.4 GPA. Class secretary all four years of high school. going to be studying in college global agribusiness coming from a farming family wants to study that at ASU as that misses outside five for the number there's nobody out just got a piece of that one at home plate Macy from Ohio, Wheelersburg High School, a Virginia commit. Just Three and two. Just misses with the off speed. Macy just wrapped up a Wheelersburg High School winning back-to-back -back state titles. Ooh, not by much. Nobody out. Lift it, back of third, over the shoulder play, and a good one. That's a great play. Lynn Lee with the grab. Lynn with a quick move. Look at how quick that drop step is. Her feet are moving just before that pitch is thrown, so she drop steps 
avoids the base runner, avoids the bag, and goes, runs this ball down. Katie Stewart takes a little bit low. From Frankfurt, Illinois, Stewart, three times first team all state. 2 0 oh, the count. the count to Stewart. Tying run is it third. Go ahead run is it second. Ball four. Now batting number 16 Julia Noller. Julia Noller from Fort Myers, Florida. She's a national champ. Johnny Manetta is her coach for Rock Gold. They won it all. Julia is headed to Clemson. They won the 18U Premier Division National Championship. Now the teammates and the victors go to the spoils. Literally, they won a title and then went sign making. <laughs> I want I want all of them as my teammates in life. That's the kind of support you need. That's awesome. There's a lot of that going on. I see a Sage Margeco little cheering section when she got that base hit. The row to our left went crazy. Some Wildcats cheering on Sophia and Giselle. The families, the fans, the coaches. It's a really fun crowd. Three and one the count. I want to hang out with Johnny Manetta. Bouncing ball, middle of the diamond, diving attempt. Another run will score and a big one. Williams claps her hands as she aggressively takes the turn. They love them some Julia. Smile one time, just once notice them. And a nice diving effort up the middle. Oh, Olivas keeps the ball in the ball. infield, but runners are off, and that scores a couple. <laughs> <laughs> pitch in tight. Bella Faw. There's a Tennessee commit. Atlanta Vipers, 18U Gold, Tambora, North Gwinnett High School recently graduated. And going to play at Tennessee, loving the environment. Coach is looking on. I think if I'm Ralph right now, I'm really, I'm hitting my text over to Karen saying, you know, I, I'm not sure what time In-N-Out Burger closes, but <laughs> I don't want to it's miss time. that tonight. <laughs> I mean, I understand it's all well and good here. Paul puts it on the ground with the flip. They get the runner at second, not able to turn the double play, but working together in the middle of the infield, strong defensively. And as this game goes on, you could feel the teams become more connected and closer together, the camaraderie, the East team, when runs score, they're all out, high five in. Like they've been playing together for years. Same thing with the West. The communication, turning double plays. Bringing the infield together for short conferences. I mean, the game's the game. Savannah Bedell. Savannah Bedell. Tries to shoot that one on the ground the other way. Six to five, the score. The East squad has climbed back on top here in this inning. Yes, 
Run hurrying home, feeding, holding on, and unable to do so. Another run scores, seven five the score. Here in the top of the sixth inning. Two and one. Savannah rolls it out toward third. On across the diamond and in time for the out. But oh, they made some noise. That East squad stepping up with a big inning. They have turned it on its head. And they lead it by a score of seven to five, the high school All-American game. Will the West answer back? High School All-American game where Sticks, Ashton Danley takes the rock and rolls out of Winchester, Tennessee, Huntland High School. And headed to Florida State, has been playing a PGF event since she was 10 years old and very honored to represent all the high school players in the country to be an All-American as she spins it around and from the West squad faces Sophia Knight. Fia from Huntington Beach, California. We saw her work earlier in this game. Good pitch right under her hand. Screwball there, tough to handle. Last night, who do you love to watch play at any level? Whether it be the highest of levels, college, your level. She rolls that one to the right side. It's a big hit for Sophia. Sierra Daniel, check that. Anyone missing an apple? I call. Come to the press box. Sierra gets that hit. Sierra from Chandler, Arizona, the Seton Catholic star. My apologies there, Sierra. What a job she did at Seton and Chandler, and she is an LSU commit. That one is popped foul to the right side, and that base hit. For Sierra, the daughter of Pam and Peter. Oh, and one to count. And skips on by, and she moves up pretty quickly. The West has a chance to be right back in this ball game. Sierra in scoring position, her third year playing in PGF All-American games. Played basketball her freshman year in high school, ran track. Curve ball hits the inside corner for a strike. On top of that one, beautiful pitch and a fine play charging in. Julian Noller made that play from third base. Kennedy Miller getting it out front, a little ground ball to shortstop. Moves the runner over successfully. Gabby Leach takes strike one. He's got Sierra Daniel at third. H wing number 20 on that jersey.
This Tennessee commit. Trying to pull her team to within a run. Slow roller. Unable to do so that time. Nice job just drifting back. Ashton Danley. Ends up keeping Daniel at third. Ashton Danley does her job. And if that hit is anywhere other than back to Danley in the circle, right. Daniel might have a chance to score, but instead Danley fields it with her eye on Daniel, keeps her there, and gets the out. That one skipped into the dirt. Sierra toward the plate with the slide, and she's in there. Daniel comes all the way around to score. A big welcome by her teammates in the dugout. You've seen a lot of aggressive base running on the base paths, and when this changeup gets in the dirt, it's got so much spin on it that it gets away just far enough. We're not talking about hitting the backstop. This is five, eight feet away. One and one the count, seven, six the score. Boy, that is That's nasty. <laughs> nice pitch and nice swing. Danley turned it up a notch on this drop ball. So why not try it again? A one-run game. Up front, the aggressive play of Sierra Daniel makes a big difference. We roll along 7-6 in the high school All-American game. Lead off the top of the seventh inning. Amanda and Darren and you, thanks for being with us. So many of these great names that you'll be seeing playing in postseason, probably next year. And these are the level of players as Ashton Danley now hits on the other side for the East squad. This is the level of player that finds themselves into everyday play because of the level of travel softball. Do you think that makes a big difference, Amanda? You're playing high level travel softball more than was available a decade ago. Does that help you maybe fit in quicker on a college campus as a player? Oh, absolutely. I think you, you've been challenged when you play at that high level, and so you're more prepared to be able to step in and uh, face the challenges that are at the, the collegiate level. I think it makes a huge difference. And you have a team like the Rock Gold team earlier, or the Beverly Bandits. You and I talked about it as Danley rolls that one out towards short. Turned into an out out there. Nice quick transfer. Had to play that one off to the right just a little bit. Sarah Perez with a fine defensive play. You know, we were talking about the premier two teams playing for the championship. And obviously, they don't have the experience of a college team. But on a given day, the, those 18U premier top four, top five teams could hang in a mid-major conference skill set level. You know, if you give them a three-game series. I absolutely agree. There is so much talent at the 18U level right now. And they just get better by competing in tournaments like this where they play that top level competition every day and they really have to figure out what works for the team and um, how to make it to the end. And so especially those teams that we saw in today's game earlier, those 18U Premier teams, I think they would put up a pretty good fight at the next level. We're seeing Mariah Penta hit from Chesapeake City, Maryland, Bohemia Major High School. And she is an Auburn commit as she takes low. She said, prior to my selection, all I knew about this All-American game was the best softball players competing against each other. Now to be selected, it's an honor. Special to know that my hard work has paid off. <laughs> Mariah went around that time. Of course, her sister Maddie Penta, All-American at Auburn. She'll go join her there. Her mom, Susan, played college softball at Delaware. Nice big playable hop turned into an out by Perez. That's back-to-back. -back. 
assist this inning for the talented shortstop. Yeah, Perez has gotten some good action over there at shortstop tonight. Lyles now, Lila Blackwell. You better be on your toes. This is a lightning bolt in that batter's box. Virginia Tech awaits her arrival. First team All-State competitor in the state of Indiana. Her team's varsity MVP. She takes outside, 3-0 the count. Loopy's yet to come inside on Blackwell. And try to make her hit her way on, poured that one right down the middle. The 3 1 to Lila. Stabs through that one, 3 and 2, the count. And a good job of coming back from that 3 0 count. the commitment to the bottom half we go to put a bow on this high school all-american game in beautiful Irvine California some of the final moments for these players as travel ball competitors and it's off to dominate on a college campus near you Ashton Danley looking to put this game to bed for the East squad in those beautiful red jerseys and away we go right back to the screen the final run at it and Lynn Lee is the first person out of the gates to give it a shot. From Malapitas, California, she is a Duke commit. And she'll play for coach Marissa Young. Lee played her travel softball for Haley Woods and the Cal Nuggets Woods team. Former teammate Sidney Stewart played in this All-American game last year, representing the Nuggets in the Bay Area. Played to the right side, recovers, not in time. Tying run is on. What a fight just to put the ball in play and to get it into that spot. You knew it was going to be trouble when it takes that third hop. It takes that last bounce up. You could see that higher hop. Janisa Conway from Olivehurst, California, the Michigan commit. A student, principal's list now on her way. One and one the count. Would love to coach this sport someday in the future. But also in the kinesiology school at the University of Michigan. She's got a chance now, this kinesiology major, to tie this game up. Also got admitted to business school and plans on, boy, it's going to be tough, plans on a double major at the University of Michigan. Ooh. Two and two the count. That's an academic flex and good for her. Straight A's through high school, A honor roll student. Two and two the count on Conway. Boy, a big strike out there. Sticks, digs right back out of it. Now betting. Three pitches in the Ryan. same zone Ryan. to 
to get Conway swinging. Hard down, nice drop. Ryan Brown, what a night she has had. Doubled in a pair, singled and scored three RBIs before this game really even got started. The Texas commit hits it hard, but it's played on a hop. Danley turns and fires. Brown hits the softball hard. I mean, it's a great play in this circle, but Brown has been impressive tonight. Yeah, Danley, give her credit for making this jab. That was merely reflexes to protect herself. That ball was hit so hard. Brown doesn't just swing for contact. Here's Caitlin Terry now. Right down the middle for strike one to Terry. The AZ native and the UCLA commit. Her coach stopped by to visit with us earlier. Earlier today at the 18 U age group, and then yesterday in the Platinum Games, we saw a lot of tears for a lot of these athletes because it was over. This part of their life was over, and for these All-Americans now, this is it. That one skips by, can't find it. Runner makes an aggressive run and a turn at third. One more of those, and we'll be playing on. In Lee at third, one and two the count. East squad looking to put this one away. And it's rolled foul. This has been such a cool game to watch these elite athletes before they head off to college, and I hope they take a mental snapshot of how they feel right now. In these final moments. off the plate, pretty good take. Three and two the count. The three, two. And we'll do it again. Caitlin Fierce in the circle when she pitched earlier. Arizona, very heavily decorated. That East team looking to lock it up. Let's see. Line foul. Boy, she took a shot at tying this game up. Earlier in the game, it was the big bat of the floor to commit Mia Williams. Yikes. Yeah, that was really fun to watch. This is the first home run that we'd seen over the fence today. The big bomb. <laughs> Runners on first and third. The winning run is at first. That was a nine pitch at bat. Naylin Marshall, who earlier was waving her shoulder a little bit. I'm glad to see her back out there. Marshall. Nyland takes outside. She is a Cal commit, as we've talked about. Top 15 player in the country in the class of 2023. On a roll in high school as a graduate all four years. One and one the count.
again favoring. Can't tell if it's the shoulder, the wrist. Yeah, good call. So talented and excited to see what she does at Cal. But if that, whatever is going on on that left side, that's uncomfortable. Definitely want to get that treated. Grabbed at the elbow there. Yeah, Chelsea Spencer has got to be holding her breath. And you hope it's nothing, just maybe a little tweak in that arm. But it's better to play it safe. So a teammate. Injury Cassidy Pickering will help her out. Number 16. And that'll do it. The East, the East squad victorious. And yet another fabulous edition of the Premier Girls Fast Pitch High School All-American Game. We officially wish all of these athletes fabulous college careers. And I know they're going to have it. I just hope they enjoyed these final moments on the field and felt like it was a real true celebration for the hard work that they put in their entire high school careers. And prior to that, I hope the families feel celebrated and I can't wait to see what they're able to do at the next level. Yeah, these, are, these are the best players in the country and the best incoming freshmen from Fullerton to Arkansas to LSU to BYU all over the country they'll be making an impact and making a huge difference what a celebration of the sport it was tonight what a great day of broadcasting here from Irvine California first and foremost our PGF production team led by John Walsh it's incredible the commitment to the product and we're glad to share this sport with all of you PGF is incredible. Dan Hay and the leadership, what he has built out here and his entire team, from the umpires to the coaches to those that support. Amanda Freed sits by my side and educates us each and every time we talk about this game. This game is in very good hands with athletes like this. Until next time, we look forward to seeing all of you at the ballpark. Premier Girls Fast Pitch. That's a wrap on the High School All-American game. Good night, everyone.